All right. A new day, a new week. And uh, not necessarily me being new, but... <laughs> let's, get, let's see what we can do about... Uh, working on this mountain man for uh, just a few more minutes. I want to try a couple of things. I've had a... bopping around in my brain for about the last three days and see if it works. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Time to play with some clay. I've been uh, re-listening to a book that I read when I was in high school back in 1963, 64, and it was one of the uh, two books that inspired me to become a sculptor. Well, at the time I didn't think I'd ever be a sculptor. I I gotta tell you, I went to college to be a uh, illustrator because I didn't think, I mean, sculpting was something Michelangelo did or Auguste Rodin or some of the modern masters. And uh, it wasn't something that I ever pictured myself doing. But I read a book back then called The Agony and the Ecstasy. And uh, I bought the uh, book on Chirp, which is a uh, audio book link. That's chirp.com of uh, The Agony and the Ecstasy. And it's a story about Michelangelo, and it follows him from when he apprentices himself to a gentleman. I can't tell you his name because it's an Italian name, and it's kind of hard to speak Italian. But uh, that's how he started, was to be a, an illustrator, somebody who could paint walls. Artists were kind of looked down on, and his father looked down on them completely. And uh, But it's a good set of books, and I've been listening to it, and it's got parallels To a lot of the things that I've gone through myself as far as my, my desire to sculpt I don't know where the writer got all that info from I don't think he's a sculptor himself so he must have hung around sculptors for a while when he was making or writing a book because he did a great job of uh, interpreting a lot of the things that we go through. Sculptors were not really looked up to back then in the 1400s or 1500s and uh, They were considered lower than the serfs. Yeah, there were artists who were great back then. Leonardo, Leon, <coughs> Leon, <coughs> Leonardo da Vinci and people like that. 
stuff, but I, I don't know. Leonardo and Michelangelo had a kind of a going feud between each other because uh, it's just the way it was back then. Anyway, it's a great set of books or a great book to listen to. You're, if you get the audio, it's the best way to go because if you try to read that book and try to understand all the names that uh, they go through. I mean, even listening to it, you're sitting there saying, huh? But if you get past all that, it's a great, great book. And uh, right now I'm up to where he's sculpting the, uh, they called it the Giant David. Um, out of uh, a piece of marble that had sat for 50 years because nobody could figure out what to do with it because it was so oddly shaped and uh, Michelangelo had to figure out how to bring out of it what was hiding in the marble. There was a saying I thought I had made up myself that what a sculptor does is create something that never was before and that's actually a quote from the book and I'd forgotten that's where I heard it and I always thought that I came up with that uh, little tidbit but uh, as I was listening to the book there it was right there it was something that stuck in my mind and uh, became part of me a sign of a good book the other book I read was The uh, Naked Came I and uh, it's a book uh, that's about Go uh, Auguste Rodin and uh, him and his life of sculpting they all struggled to uh, compete against politics in art and there was politics there, there's politics now in art uh, you just have to try to overcome it I did the pupil out of clay, but I want to change the position of the pupil. Now, if you remember correctly, I made that eye out of a hardening clay. It's like a ceramic clay, but it's not. There's no um, no firing involved. You just do it and let it sit for 24 hours and it's rock hard. I wish I could remember the name of it. I'll put the name of it up here once I look it up on my computer. I got it off of uh, Amazon. I still got a bit of the clay here and it's good for sculpting but not what I do. I just wanted to change the direction of his pupil.
Yeah. That puts some emotion in his eye, his emphasis on relating the fact that he is a mountain man. I are a mountain man. All right, I'm going to take uh, the clay away and uh, work on another one for a while. Okay, I'm going to set my uh, horses up on my table here. I'm putting my little portable Lazy Susan onto my sculpting stand. Somebody asked me how high is my sculpting stand and uh, I really don't know. I never really measured it. It's a sculpting stand that was made by a friend of mine, an artist friend of mine, years ago. He's no longer with us. And he made it out of, he told me, out of an old architectural um, chair. Uh, a uh, chair that raises and lowers with a uh, lever I've got underneath the table here. Uh, I had this top made by a local woodworker because I wanted a round top so that I wouldn't have corners that would catch on things. And uh, did a good job of it. Anyway, I'm going to set my horses on here. And I'm going to work on the uh, mane and tail of both horses. And uh, and I'm going to call it quits on this. I've got an idea to do a a warrior piece and uh, I'm anxious to get started on that too. All right, I'll be right back. Got to anchor it to the, whoops, to the table or to the uh, turntable. So I can turn it without losing it. Also, I need to have it screw out far enough that when I do the base, it won't be interfered with and won't be covered up so I won't be able to get this uh, off the table again. All right. All right, I'm just going through my pictures that I've got that I printed out for the uh, reference on this uh, horse piece. I finally found them. It took me a few minutes. And, uh, I'm just getting myself set up so I can start doing the tail and, and mane. It's taking me longer to get set up than I thought it was going to, and I may not be able to get much done today, but at least I got set up for tomorrow. Um, but that's what I'll do tomorrow. I'll start on the uh, horse, and uh, the horses, I mean, and uh, start working on their mane and tails to find the original photograph that I was working from. I can't find it. So I'll just have to keep looking. I would like to ask you quickly, if you like my videos, make it a New Year's resolution to click the uh, like button, a thumbs up, and to subscribe. I'd like to be able to get my subscriptions up quite a bit this year and click the bell if you want to be notified of my next video. That would really be nice and uh, would be a gift to me. All right. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video it will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos. 
that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.